Hello everyone. Thank you for checking out the Unexpected History YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I swear to you that the pictures you are about to see are real, have not been altered in any way by me, and are of two separate and distinct people. Buckle up folks, this one's kinda wild. In 1903, one William West, who we'll call Will for reasons that will become obvious shortly, became a guest of the Federal Penitentiary at Leavenworth, Kansas. While being processed, the clerks used the Bertillon system of identification, which uses photos and anthropometric measurements. All well and good so far, right? Not exactly. You see, the clerks then matched him to a William West, who had a prior conviction for murder. Unsurprisingly, Will denied being that William. In fact, he denied ever having been there before. The clerks then pulled William West's file. The mugshot looked the same as the man standing before them. The anthropometric measurements were nearly identical, certainly falling within the margin of error at any rate. The more the clerks looked, the more they were convinced William West was standing right there. Except he wasn't. After being shown the picture in William West's file, Will still denied being that William West, despite all evidence to the contrary. Shrugging, the clerk put the mugshot back into the file, and as he did so, he noticed something that he had thus far overlooked, a written statement that William West was already incarcerated at Leavenworth. More to the point, he was serving a life sentence which had started in 1901, nearly two years gone. Disbelief flooded through the clerks, but one was tasked with finding the William West supposedly already imprisoned there. It took some time, but found he was, in his cell, in the prison. When that William West was brought back to the office, nobody could believe that two men with the same name, nearly identical identifying measurements, and looked so eerily similar to one another were standing in the same room at the same time in the same prison. Still not truly trusting the men, I mean they were prisoners at a federal penitentiary after all, fingerprints were taken from both of the William Wests, compared and found to be entirely different. In the aftermath, and mostly as a result of this incident, fingerprints were seen as more accurate than anthropometric measurements in determining identity. The practice of fingerprinting soon became commonplace in law enforcement, and the Bertillon system was dropped altogether. Now, this story, while true, has been somewhat sensationalized. Some prison records, uncovered long after the incident, have been left out, which apparently indicated that both Will West and William West often corresponded with many of the same people, some seemingly members of the same family. That alone would lead to the assumption both men were likely related, although there's no real evidence for that. There's also at least one anecdotal story about another inmate at the prison claiming to know both men on the outside and that they were actually twins. Again, this is anecdotal at best. The William West we started this story with served his time and was released and seemed to make no further impact on history. The other William West, serving a life sentence, was freed on parole in 1919, but not without a few hiccups along the way. He spent some time in solitary confinement for fighting and other disturbances, and in 1916, having earned the role of guarding other inmates while on work details, he, quote, succumbed to temptation, unquote, hopped on a freight train, and attempted to escape. Before being arrested the next day, he actually made it as far as Topeka. The most ironic part of his recapture was that he was identified by a picture and a written description of him in a circular issued to police departments around the state. That means that one of the men responsible, albeit indirectly, for helping usher in a more modern system for the identification of criminals was caught using many of the procedures of the old system. I always thought doppelgangers were urban legends or old wives tales. This story kind of makes me doubt that. Although if I'm honest about it, it's more likely that they were actually twins, or at least somewhat related to each other, rather than being complete and total strangers. What do you think about this story? Were the two men related, or did they have no connection to each other? I honestly don't really know what to make of it. You can leave your thoughts down in the comments below, but remember, keep it civil. A special thanks goes out to our one and only Patreon supporter, Sue. Your support is very much appreciated. Speaking of support, if you'd like to help out, you can find all the links down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave us a like, comment, subscribe, all the good things. Help us defeat that YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.